Am I the a-hole for taking back my PS5 my mom gave to our cousin as a gift? I'm a 19-year-old male. My mother is 57 and my cousin is 13-year-old male. So I waited until 2021 November to try PS5. I've been trying since release. At the 22nd of November, I finally got one. I was so excited to do everything with this console and couldn't wait. That I bought another controller and so many games to have with this baby even though I took out a bit of my time slash savings. But this is also the time when people take Christmas presents into consideration. And I kept this like a present to myself. My cousin, I'll call him Joe, has autism. And I love the little dude. But I need to clarify that he's very spoiled and his parents don't do anything to teach him a lesson. He really wanted a PS5, and there were so many tantrums when he didn't get one. So to keep the peace, my mom took my PS5 when I was at school and hid it from me. I was shocked when I didn't see it there, and I really started to cry as I spent so much money for it. My mom told me that she took my PS5 to calm down my cousin, and that she'll pay me back. And her idea of paying me back is an iPad. I yelled at her for so long, saying how long it took me to get it and save up money for it. And how dare she do that and invade my space. She hung up on me saying I wasn't being myself and giving me time to calm down. But I wasn't ready to calm down. I went to my cousin's house, rang up the doorbell, took my PS5 and games. I forgot to mention she took the games as well. A 300 pound iPad isn't going to cover 700 pound worth of stuff. And then went home. My aunt tried to stop me saying how this is all my sweet baby wants for Christmas. But I didn't care and drove straight home. My whole family's giving me so much pressure, saying I should give it back as it's not my right to go against my mother's wishes. I do feel kind of bad since his family is not that financially stable. And them buying a PS5, if they can find one, will screw up some stuff. So am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. It's yours and your mother stole it. That's a crime, you know. Family or not, doesn't matter her. Yeah, it's sad that your cousin's family doesn't have much money, but it's still a crime to steal stuff then. My sister used to give my stuff away. I always took it back from the person who got my stuff. I told her one more time and I report her to the police, because it's mine. If your mother want a gift him a PS5, she can buy one and give it to him. This one is yours. My mom used to give away my stuff, so I started giving her stuff away. She never gave away anything of mine again. Aha! Uh -huh. It's petty, but I'd love for Opie to offer one of his mother's belongings as compensation to the end. Not stay home, but make sure you either take it with you or lock it up every time you leave. Or she will give it back. I hate how families like that. You work your butt off for your things and they try to give them away. I've put a lock on the room where I keep all of my important things, so I don't have to go through it again. Lock receipts and pictures, including a photo of the receipt in your email or storage, whether it's a USB drive, cloud, or both. Not stay home. However, I'm guessing your mom did this because she doesn't really understand the difference between a PS5 and an iPad. Seems odd, I know, but I've encountered situations where people think any computerist device is either a laptop or an iPad. Tell her to get your cousin the iPad. This. Tell your mom to go buy him one with her money. Good luck. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for not letting my cousin borrow my wedding dress? Five years ago, I got married, and I had a custom wedding dress made by my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law has since passed in a car accident. It was so unexpected, and it broke my husband's heart. So now we are saving the wedding dress for my daughter who was named after my mother-in-law. My cousin Gigi no direct blood relationship with my mother-in-law, is now wanting to wear my wedding dress. Her, her mother and my granny are all on this war path that this is her dream dress, and I should let her wear it. That it would be a tribute to my mother-in-law. Again, this is my side of the family and no direct relationship to my mother-in-law. Gigi was obsessed with my wedding dress when I had it, and she has already said she wanted to wear it. Gigi is not my size, much larger front and hips so the dress would have to be majorly altered. My husband said no. He wants to have our daughter wear it when she's grown up and have it altered for her or turned into a veil. My daughter is under a year and my family said that's years off and that I should let them borrow it now. My cousin has turned petty at my refusal and has disinvited my parents, siblings, and their children. 
She told us because I'm costing her thousands of dollars because she's had to pay for a dress to look like mine, and she's also mad because I won't lend her my dress to have it copied because I 100% don't trust her with it. My auntie and granny have banned me from their life over this because it's the one thing my cousin has wanted since she saw me in my wedding dress. I was told if I don't do this, I'm cut off from any events my granny hosts, and my mom is too because she has raised such a selfish and entitled daughter. Not stay home. They are being ridiculous. However, please don't pressure your daughter to wear it when she's older. She deserves her own dream. Good point. A wedding dress that your dad grandmother made that your parents have been saving for you your entire life. That's a huge obligation for something that should be a personal choice. Obviously, but most wedding dresses have tons of fabric, so most can be reused as potentially anything within reason. I have a family friend that turned her 80s wedding dress into christening gowns for her grandkids, and there's still material left over her. Not day haul, but your family has inspired me. There is an amazing apartment with its rays in my building that I have wanted ever since we moved in. I'm going to knock on their door and demand a department, because apparently if you see something you like, you are automatically entitled to it. Absolutely. If they stop you, they're standing in the way of your dream or write off the entire side of the family, because they could all pressure Opie into doing something she said no to. What a psycho. He had a former sister-in-law that wrote off the entire side of her husband's family, a brother, side of the family over a comment one person, not immediate family, made to her, which she took as a rude comment. My mother never saw her grandchildren grow up. Twelve years later, my brother finally divorced her, completely toxic situation. And sadly, we don't really have a connection to the kids. Not stay home. She is only entitled to what she can afford. I would caution you to make sure you place your dress in a very secure place. You don't want them showing up to visit, only to later discover they stole your dress. Next story. Am I the a-hole for hiring a babysitter without asking and forwarding the bill to my brother? Plus a little update. I-23 female have a nephew and niece, 5 and 7 years old. My brother called last week and asked me to take them for two days as he and my sister-in-law had a doctor's appointment out of state. I agreed, but warned them that I can only watch the kids Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday, I had a bunch of important meetings, and I will be glued to my laptop for hours, unable to check on the kids. He said he got it. Well, Tuesday around 8 p.m., they were supposed to be picked at 9.30 p.m. My brother called and asked me to keep them another day because they got delayed and have not even started driving back. I got pissed off because if I was told earlier, maybe I might have been able to postpone most meetings or even call in sick. However, no one was at work at 8 p.m. And I find it unprofessional to cancel the same day without a really good reason. I told him to come get his kids and he became very defensive and rude, calling me unsupportive. To be clear, they went for a tummy tuck for my sister-in-law. No real medical emergency. He called mom, but she had already gone to bed, and he had the audacity to tell me to drive one and a half hours to her house, wake her up, and make her take the kids. I said no. We fought more with my sister-in-law giving her two sons in the background as well, before they hung up, and stopped picking up till the next day. I found a nice babysitter the next day, thankfully, and because it was last minute, I paid $200 for a few hours. Still mad, I just forwarded a bill to my brother, expecting him to pay. My sister-in-law called and screamed her butt off, calling me a responsible witch, because how dare leave her kids with a stranger. I was in the middle of work still, and hung up on her and just forwarded a bill to her as well. An hour later, my mom showed up at my house and took the kiddos. Now my brother is still refusing to pay, and my mom said I was petty. Things come up, and it was wrong of me not to consult them before hiring a babysitter for so much money. Am I the a-hole? Edit. I don't think I explained well everything because I am still angry. Some facts I missed. I called twice my brother in the morning to inform him of the babysitter. He did not pick up. My mom will work 1 to 2 p.m., and if I had taken the kids to her house, it would have been her neighbor, Marcy, watching them. I start work at 8 a.m., so as you can imagine, I would have had to get the kids up at 4 a.m. and run out the house at 4.30 a.m. to be safe if there is traffic. And that particular day, I worked overtime, so from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. 
If I wanted to save my brother some money, I would have had to screw both with the kids' sleeping schedule and mine. Plus, Marcy was not answering at 9 p.m. We were pretty sure she could take them, but my mom confirmed this only at 7 a.m., which means my workday would have been postponed to at least 10.30 if I was to drop them off with Marcy. Hope this makes sense. Also, I work from home. I was keeping an eye on the babysitter and children. Also to add, my work is productivity-based. I have to file a report every Friday on what I have done and someone goes over it. Some days I work an hour or two, others I stay 14 hours coding. My mom knows this well, and she argued my meetings can be postponed till the next day, which they could, but it would leave a very bad impression with my superiors, as one of the meetings concerned a promotion I had asked for, and they were reviewing my projects and productivity. I am 23, this is my dream job. Maybe my work would have understood considering how chill they usually are, but I was not taking a chance. My career means a lot to me. Now for the top comments before the little update. Not today, home. How would you be able to consult them if they stopped answering their phones? It is on your brother and sister-in-law to find alternate coverage when they were delayed. But they didn't, so you had to, to make sure it didn't affect your job. They knew you had to work on Wednesday. And their only thought was to have you drive one and a half hours to physically wake up your mom? Nah, I can see if she maybe lived 10 to 30 minutes away, but not one and a half hours. They shouldn't have stopped communicating and need to pay up. This whole situation is on them, and don't let anyone convince you otherwise. Your only downfall was agreeing to watch other kids so your sister-in-law could have plastic surgery. This is the thing that shocked me the most. Have your kids. In what world would you stop picking up for well over 12 hours? What if I was not calling to fight, but for something related to their health and well-being? Yep. We don't stop communicating with a person who has your children without a really good reason. And them being told they needed to abide by the original agreement times is not a valid reason to ignore your calls or texts. Not stay home. You gave them the days you were available. They agreed to those days. They tell you one hour before they were supposed to pick them up, you were getting stuck with them another day despite knowing your situation. For them to call one hour before pickup and haven't even left yet means they knew hours previous to that call that they weren't going to make it in time, but chose to not say anything until the last minute and they wanted you to fix the situation by picking up your life doing a three-hour round trip to wake your mom up in the middle of the night because they are irresponsible. I'd 100% put my foot down and say until the money's repaid, no future babysitting will be happening for any length of time for any reason at all. After this behavior, no babysitting, period. I spent a better part of my night panicking what to do and thinking of a very good life for work. I maybe slept two to three hours waiting for the morning to start calling babysitting agencies. And if no luck, my manager and get an earful from him. Not stay home. They can afford a tummy tuck and several nights away in hotel. Then they can afford to pay for babysitting. You might not get the money back, but pay to sit her. Then never take their kids again. Not even 10 minutes. Oh, and tummy tucks aren't a real easy recovery. Definitely let them experience the consequences of no longer having you as a resource when she has her vanity procedure. Now for the little update. I sent this post to my brother, sister-in-law, and mom, and they all went nuts. At this point, I am being petty and a hollish, but I regress. With most people telling not to stay all here, I kinda gained some confidence to lash back further. Thank you. You can all rest assured my brother and sister-in-law are pissed our family's dirty laundry was aired on whole wide web. Insert an eye roll because account is anonymous, and I have not mentioned any names of parties involved. I have been uninvited from Easter and I was informed I can stick my $200 where the sun doesn't shine. Well, worth it to annoy them. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for not canceling my bachelorette trip because of my sister-in-law's emergency? Last weekend was my bachelorette trip. The hotel my friends and I would stay at was booked. We had already made so many arrangements. And I didn't cancel any of that after my sister-in-law had a health emergency and was rushed into hospital. She had a heart attack two days before I'd leave for the trip. For context, my sister-in-law and I have always had a very bad relationship because she has been racist towards me. She has insulted my six-year-old son whom I have from another marriage. 
She has urged her kids to bully my son, and she claims that if her and my fiancé's mother was still alive, she'd make sure it never gets married to my fiancé. She's also tried to get my fiancé to hook up with one of her friends in order to break us up. My fiancé is low contact with her, but to this point, I'm completely no contact, and at the wedding, I'm simply gonna tolerate her for my fiancé's sake. When she had a heart attack, my fiancé told me to immediately cancel the trip and plans, because it wouldn't be right of me to celebrate while his sister is at the hospital. I told him that I'm not gonna cancel a trip my friends that I have already paid for, for a woman who would probably celebrate on my hospital bed if I were in her position. He said I'm right, but I should cancel because regardless, it's gonna be a bad look for his relatives if I disrespect his sister like that. He said it doesn't really care, he just wants to avoid a drama of his family. I told him I honestly don't give a damn about what his relatives will think, because all of them were bystanders not doing anything or saying anything while she was horrible to me the whole time. He supported my decision, but after that, his relatives were of course mad at me and cussing me out, and threatened to not attend a wedding. Am I the a-hole? Info Why are you marrying a man who not only lets his sister treat you this way, but who lets his sister treat your child this way? My fiancé and his sister did not get along either. She was horrible to him as well throughout childhood because they had different dads. She's the oldest one, and she didn't consider him a brother unless it benefited her agenda. They've only been low contact and only wish each other on holidays and birthdays. He wasn't even 100% certain he wanted her at the wedding, but invited her in order to avoid drama with the rest of the relatives. He didn't care about me going on a trip. He only cared about not causing drama with the rest of his family. Has fought with her many times over her actions. Okay, that's good to hear. I still think you're not stay home, but I wasn't sure about him. I can't blame him for not wanting drama with the extended family, but if they know how she treats you, then they shouldn't fault you either. But like you say, they're all to blame for not defending you to her. I mean, there is peacekeeper, then there is pushover. There are times to keep the peace, but having someone being racist towards your fiancé and encouraging the bull of your future stepchild is not it. I would blow up any relationships I had to, to get that kind of person out of my life personally. Your fiancé is avoiding conflict at your expense. The only people his appeasement policy helped are himself at his racist sister. Not stay home. Sounds like it worked out if the toxic relatives won't attend a wedding. Yep, go and enjoy yourself. If any relatives want to miss the wedding over this, good riddance.